<clears throat> hey, I'm Sergeant Maker. Appreciate you stopping by. And today, I want to show you how I'm going to take an old dovetail jig and repurpose it to help me fix, or I should say improve, my clamping situation on my vertical table for my Avid CNC machine. I don't know why I didn't think about this a long time ago, but I think it's a pretty cool um, solution to my problem and uh, want to bring you along. So let's go do it. I have this Lee dovetail jig. I've had it for a long time. They don't even make this model anymore. I think it's called a, let me check. I think this was a D4. It's uh, 24 inches long. But as I was playing around my CNC machine, I kept realizing, gosh, this is almost like using my lead dovetail jig. The only difference is I don't have these pins and I don't have these clamps, but I still clamp my boards vertically and horizontally if I'm going to do a one-step operation such as a half-blind dovetails. But what, lead, what the jig does have is this clamping bar. So, I'm gonna reuse those clamping bars for my vertical table. Pull those clamping bars off. I think I'm probably gonna have to make some modifications because the uh, channel on there is a lot thicker material. And these, uh, let me show you. These ends here, um, they have these little Oops, wrong side. They have these little tabs. So this bolt rides in the channel on that lead dovetail jig, which will ride, ride in my uh, T-track channel on my vertical board. And it has these little tabs. But the thing is, these tabs are pretty tall. So what I did was I sanded them down, grind them down. So when I tighten up this bolt, these don't interact with the T nut, and uh, which in which uh, essentially will keep it from actually tightening up and staying in place. So I've already sand, I've already ground ground these down thin enough, able to work on there. Now I just need to do the other ones. So this here, if you look at this here, this works on like a cam system. It's very effective. I mean, this really has some good holding power. And if you want a little bit more, you just put like a really fine sandpaper on the inside there. But anyways, it's another time. Anyways, I need to recover these here off of here. So these parts. So get this. All right, so. These are those little nubs I was talking about that I need to sand down a little bit. You can see them pretty decent there. So I mean, I go ahead and take those down a little bit. That should do it. Okay, so now I got those ground down. And what I was getting at is when I start tightening this up, what happens is these studs, if not ground down, will actually come in contact with this before it can be pinched between the T-track. So that's why I had to grind that down. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in here like so. I just wanna get this thing set up. What's nice is those tabs are still long enough to keep it locked in place there. Really good. That ain't going anywhere. All right. I'll go ahead and get this other one installed on the other side. Now I'm not gonna tighten this down all the way because I need to line up the bar and everything. Let me go get the bar. It's probably going to be the tricky part because it has these springs. You can feed it through there. I'm probably just going to go down here.
know if I kept my wrench in place, huh? Good. Let's see how well this works. This is just a theory. I haven't really planned it out, but we'll see. All right, so we'll put on one of these cam nut things. I don't know what the hell they're called. And then supposedly what we do is, it's time to put a piece in. Oops, let this out a little bit. Let this out a little bit, there we go. And then I could just, oops, screw that in a little bit like this. And bam, tighten that down and come over here. And yeah. The thing I'm going in was, if you want to make it even tighter or more secure, get like 320 uh, PSA sandpaper and just stick it to the back of this bar. And you could possibly even put it on the front here, but I think the back of the bar is fine. Or get you some of that um, crubber. It's like a cork rubber and glue it on the back of this. So when it clamps, it even has more grip. Because right now, this is nice and smooth. It's always been like that, but it seems to always work in the past. But there you go. And just like when you set up a lead jig, you put your backer board behind here on the top. And instead of using a, the fingers and the router, I'm using this bad boy right here. This is my router, except I don't have to hold it. And uh, for those of you who have... A lead jig, you know, sometimes you can get a little sketchy when you got the old router there and you're routing. So, but anyways, there you go. That's my uh, repurpose of my lead jig. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm probably going to move this down more and install my other bar on the other side. So, there you go. If you have any questions, drop me a line. At ease, maker.